start that question again. Uh, Ellen says, uh, Manny Pacquiao or Mayweather? Well, I'd pick Manny Pacquiao because he's more exciting to watch. And he comes, you know, and he's been knocked out himself a couple of times, but he takes a chance, he stands there and he trades. Mayweather doesn't. Uh, but Mayweather's unbeatable at, at his best. Uh, but he nullifies the game and plays a system where Sugar Ray Leonard, my favourite all time fighter, I think he could have. Um, he could have implemented that style that, that Mayweather's got, but how many, how many greatest hits or greatest uh, compilation of fights would you buy a Mayweather's compared to Sugar Ray Leonard or, or uh, Manny Pacquiao? Even though he's undefeated, I'd take them two above him any time. So, you prefer Manny Pacquiao, you prefer to pay to watch Manny Pacquiao? Yeah, yeah. yeah. At, the, at the peak? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So don't you think that, going back to when Mayweather first, first on the scene and he won the world title, he beat that General and Anders, didn't he? He just took him to school, didn't he? As a well-schooled fighter against a kid and he just, he was like he was nothing, wasn't he? And his style changed over the years, didn't it? Like you said, levels. So, it's all about levels and uh, some kids can look fantastic against Lolo and then as they step up they get found out and uh, the dad's boxing epitomises the levels class. Uh, what do you think, this is from John in Cardiff, what do you think to the pay per view going up to £25 yesterday? I think they're just milking it and milking it and like why they can get away with it, they're going to. But I don't you think it's an abuse of power now. Yeah, a little bit. I think they do it because they can. Um, but you think somebody's not. But having said that, when I've been, when I've been over at stage years ago when I was doing uh, when I was promoting Ricky, uh, I think they were charging $50 then. And it were a, a split between HBO and I think. Oh, it's not, it's not, it's not direct or something. But I think they, they were, they're used to paying a lot more in the state. But here, I mean, imagine doing a pay-per-view in Thailand or India, you'd have to charge 50 pence, something like that. It's all relative to where you are and what, you can, what the market depicts. Uh, but uh, these fighters, that have, they all want to be pay-per-view fighters and a lot on them aren't. Um, but you want kids to get in and out of boxing with a few quid, financially stable, and, and then, you know, with the health intact and, and got a few quid because they have, you know, put their lives on the line and uh, took risks. Uh, do you think that, this is a question from me, this actually, do you think that, going back to the the Dillian White situation with the B sample, I mean, the, the preaching about morals and this and that, but that B sample would have never have come out if Thomas Hauser hadn't blown the whistle, would it? He wouldn't have found out about it, would he? No, nobody wants to see kids cheat or anything, but like, you were a question mark of, oh, and I love Roy Jones, of a Roy Jones, Tarver, and, you know, there have been fighters. Tarver's had three, I think. So, like, there's been a few fighters in the, in the States who, who's got question marks with Adam, and, and obviously these athletes, some, some athletes over here, you've got Kid Galahad who, who got a pull. You've got Liam Cameron who got some uh, cocaine in his in his traces of cocaine in his water. So it's it's wrong. But you've just got to do your best to police it. And uh, if you give somebody an unfair advantage, it's wrong. But you know, some of these kids take a chance, and I think some make a mistake. They get it wrong. Hopefully, they learn from it and don't do it again and uh, win fair and square. Yeah. Uh, do you think that Dillian White, this is a question from me, do you think that Dillian White has improved with the fighters with Joshua Green? Yes, definitely. Yeah. When, I, when, he, when, when yeah. Dillian first fought Joshua, when I remember a friend of mine who, who, who knew Dillian, a fellow called Ned Rowling, who were a pro fighter, self-heavyweight, great pal of my dad's old Ned, 
Um, he told me that they were making that fight, and I says, could do we another two or three fights before he fights Joshua? I said, and then he maybe could beat him. Anyway, I, was, I remember being at Centre Park, and I went to watch it, and everybody was saying, oh, Joshua's just going to knock him out. I actually backed, and I would have backed him a lot heavier if he'd have had two or three more uh, learning fights at Gillian. And uh, if you remember, the second round, I think it was, he had Joshua all over the place. Yeah, he did, yeah. Um, and uh, he won't punch away from stopping him. But obviously, then he got stopped. But I, got, I think he got stopped out because of conditioning. I think he's now, I, th I think he's got a chance with Joshua. He, 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 uh, he leaves it all in ring, doesn't he? Now, doesn't he? He, don't, he don't try and save anything now. I like to watch him, and, he, and he, he's up there. I think, he'd be, I think he's got more chance against Joshua than what he has against. Um, yeah, and Wilder. And Wilder. Mm. Do you, uh, what do you They've think got better chins. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Joshua has got as good a chin as that man. Yeah. Well, when he gets he, 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 he stays it, yeah. Whereas yeah. Tyson gets it, he recovers. Young to it, recovers. He's got a good chin anyway, but he, he'll recover or he'll absorb a better punch than the others. What do you think to Dillian's training team? <laughs> Who's his training team? Did you? Yeah, well, oh, I can't say anything. I can say anything other than respect and uh, re to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to Mark Tibbs. He's, he's a gentleman and he's seen everything. So, him and his dad. Uh, they're just a class act, they, they, they don't shout from rooftops, but listen, if I'd have been a pro fighter, they'd have been one of, one of them on top of my list to train me. If I'd have been a pro fighter, you didn't live down there? No, I'd have probably travelled to have them train me, wouldn't I? Whether I'd come from up here or not. So, like, so I'd have somebody like Mark and his dad training me at the drop of a hat. And been a privilege. So Why don't you try and get them to train Clinton then? It's a, it's a time difference. So, sorry, I think, the would, I think we were working on we were on different paths at that time. And, and Brendan rang me after Clinton got beat by Tom. And I wanted Brendan to do a little bit. Not necessarily his technique, just mentally. Because I think I could have had a bit more, but um, Glenn's my pal, and, and we, we, we went with Glenn for him last couple of fights. And, uh, and he almost won a world title again against uh, Tavares Powell. But I think Clinton had just started to question himself uh, at that time. So, but what a journey it was, and uh, he earned a lot of money from what people thought, what people thought were an average fighter. So we went right to the pinnacle. Uh, what do you think uh, about Tyrone Nurse at the moment then? What for him? Uh, I wanted him to fight on this show. Um, and uh, I'm going to try and make a, a meaningful fight with Chris Congo. Um, Chris Jenkins is our idea for him. Uh, that sort of fight I can see us making. Um, I'm hoping we're going to fight on this, but he threw some personal issues and stuff like that. He can't fight on this show, but I've tried to make a meaningful fight. But, but in the new year, I think Tyrone can put him in for a meaningful title and hopefully we sit down after this show whether they come to our show I hope they do and uh, we'll talk after and make, and make a big fight after the yeah. uh, uh, new kid that you've signed Dennis uh, Nathan Owen Owen uh, he's a teacher, uh, a school teacher, and, uh, Nathan is. Yeah, and he looks after some of the disruptive kids. He's got a great personality, a great attitude, and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing him fight. Once again, he's as game as a badger. And, uh, and I think the pro ranks from where I'm told, and I've got very close friends who've been working with him for the amateur. Kevin Bailey, his dad Paul used to train with me. And uh, um, Bob Wright, who runs Parsons Cross ABC. Great people. And I'm um, looking forward to working with him. He's a great kid. And he's very popular, sold a lot of tickets, so it's going to be a great atmosphere. Also, you know.
Well, I think we'll have a break from filming now and uh, have a uh, have a toast then. Call friends and no friends. Good health. Good health, health as well. Uh, health is well. Shout out to Robin Reed and Peter Fury and Frank Smith. We like Frank, don't we, Dennis at Warrington? Love to you, Frank, Peter. We'll be seeing you. <laughs> 